In my hand, I hold a pineapple. In my other hand, I hold a US dollar. Why am I holding the two, and how are they similar? First, we have to understand the history of the pineapple. Back in the 1500s, this was discovered by Europeans um, in South America. And so they went and tried to take it to Europe. The only issue was by the time this thing had spent months on a ship, most of these things were rotten. I actually bought this thing about three days ago and already you can see it's starting to brown in certain areas. So this thing became so rare through the 16 and 1700s all through Europe that you can actually still see today pineapples in the carvings of the architecture. Okay, this thing got so expensive at one point, a single pineapple was worth $8,000. The rich, the wealthy, the aristocrats, monarchs, Catherine the Great, Louis the 15th, and Charles the Second even bought these things. And it was a sign of their wealth. They were displaying something. At times they would make this the centerpiece. Other people would hold them in their arms here. And then what happened was in the 1900s, a man by the name of James Dole went ahead and actually started producing pineapples on the island of Lanai in Hawaii. He produced so many of these things that he supplied 75% of the world with canned pineapples. And as he started to flood the markets in Europe with these things, the price dropped dramatically from thousands of dollars down to a few dollars. I bought this thing for 298. How is that similar to the US dollar. Well, let me explain. Every single year, there's something that's called inflation. That simply means that the government prints out more and more and more and more money. So this year in 2019 alone, they're gonna add $20.69 billion to circulation. What's that mean for every single dollar like this? Well, it's just a piece of paper. But the more of them that are in the marketplace, the more that the value of this piece goes down. Down the street in Portland, Oregon here, there's a really cool spot called Gravy. And I used to go get breakfast all the time at $9.35. It's a pretty cheap breakfast. This year alone, that price has risen to $11.35. So did I get more breakfast in that price point? No, it was the same small breakfast. The only difference was it cost me more, meaning the value of my dollar actually went down. That's not the only thing that causes inflation though. Things like the rising prices of oil, the rising prices of taxes, higher wages, higher living costs all contribute to inflation. So that means if you're smart and you're putting money into a savings account, well, the more that you put in there, not only are you paying the banks to loan out your money at premiums and earn 22 to 28% on it, but most likely they're not even paying you 1% per year. Unless you're being 2.18%, you're actually losing money. So keeping your money in a bank account is kind of like if you allowed a little mouse loose in your bank and every single day, bit by bit, day by day, started chipping away and eating at your money. So what do you do to beat inflation? What do you do to take one pineapple and turn it into two pineapples? How do you turn two pineapples into three pineapples? Or in this case, what do you do to beat inflation with a dollar? You can't put it in your savings account. It's not safe there. How do you take a dollar and turn it into $2? What do you do with your money? How do you beat inflation? Well, I'm gonna answer those questions on the other side. Go ahead and click on the link below or somewhere around this video and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, my friends.